Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Benjamin Hans from Fixu, and I am here today to talk about uh, how to go from good to great on uh, social media, specifically Facebook and Twitter. Now, I know it's kind of uh, it's been a long afternoon, and lunch is right around the corner. So most of you are probably thinking like, "Ugh, this guy." But uh, we'll hopefully make it interesting. Um, any questions? Please shout. Um, First off, to position Fixu. Um, Fixu is a uh, optimization platform for mobile user acquisition. We've been around for about four and a half years. Uh, we first started as an app and then realized we could pivot for the bigger business opportunity, which is helping other app developers grow at scale. Um, we have over 800 clients. We've managed uh, 2000, about 2,500 different app campaigns, or different apps. Um, on any given day, we're running about 200 app campaigns um, on about 50 different networks. And um, yeah, we're pretty close to having generated our th three billionth, third billionth uh, download. And um, about two years ago, we were 50 employees, and now we're about two, 250. I mentioned this, this just to put it into context where, where we're getting all this uh, information from. We have a lot of data and a lot of experience over the last four years. Um, so uh, I'll give you specifics as, uh, as the examples come up, but uh, this is where we're coming from. So more importantly, um, or s setting the, Sitting the uh, big picture here, um, the mobile landscape can be um, can be broken up into five different kind of territories or five different type, types of categories. Um, in the middle, the biggest bit, you have the traditional uh, non-incent banner display networks. Uh, this is where you buy inventory on a CPC, CPM basis. Um, then you have the, the other side, the, the incentive networks, or what, what's called the reward networks. This is where users are uh, given some sort of incentive to download or, or do some sort of action on the app. Um, that gets a bad name, uh, but actually incent is, is usually just thought of as driving lots of volume in a short period of time to increase rank and visibility in the app store. Um, there's a lot you can actually do with incent, um, which is, I guess, part of another talk. Um, two things that we're really bullish on, uh, lately, and I guess one say like the last eight months, is both video and RTB. Um, video is, is uh, a great kind of execution for um, uh, your ad message, and it just, it's proven to be extremely effective for dri uh, driving quality users. RTB, on, on the flip side, is a, the, the dictionary definition of programmatic buying. Um, Fixu is a technology company. Uh, we're a technology platform. Out of those 250 people, over a third of those are uh, engineers and R&D folk. So we really get a kick out of RTB. Um, but today we're talking about social, which is um, obviously started with Facebook at the end of 2012, um, and now with Twitter with their announcement of their mobile app unit uh, on Monday. So why Facebook? Um, we all know Facebook. It's big. It's great. It, it, um, but specifically why we like Facebook is the reach. Um, Facebook has over 1 billion mobile users. Um, if you look at that, that's actually over 50% of the actual smartphones and, and smart devices out there. So that's huge, right? Um, volume, with the right tools and the right tactics, you're able to drive huge volumes of quality users in a short period of time. Um, so this isn't so much about rank, because when you talk about volume and acquiring at, at, uh, in short periods of time, you think about getting rank. It's also just, I mean, these are apps. I mean, the more users you get, the more money you make. So the faster you can do that, well, just the better everything is. Um, and long-term value. Um, with, the, with the targeting um, that you're able to, to undertake, you're able to actually understand more about your app and how the, uh, how the app behaves in the marketplace. So this is information you can then feed back into your organization um, for the next product cycle, et cetera. So the mobile app unit was uh, officially released at the end of 2012. It didn't really come up to scale until about uh, the beginning of 2013. That's when everyone kind of cottoned on to, hey, Facebook, it's happening. Um, Fixu and Facebook had been working together for quite some time uh, before the actual launch of this. We, we betaed about three of their previous uh, products that just didn't really kind of have any traction. Uh, we would take some of our clients, throw them into a beta program. The, the output would be kind of like, you know, $15 CPIs with kind of bad quality users. So then Facebook would go back to the drawing board and, you know, we'd wait for the next beta. So it really kind of kicked off the beginning of 2013. And I think we all, if you've been in, if you're in the business since then, you kind of, you knew when it happened. Everyone started talking about Facebook. Um, and this is what talking about 
what today's talk is about, it's, it's everyone could go on Facebook and at the very beginning there's this novelty effect. It's a new marketplace. There, there, there's no kind of established value for the users there. So everything was really cheap and really easy to do. So everyone was saying, oh, I'm getting really good results on Facebook. Now it's matured. Uh, it's a bit more of a difficult challenge. Uh, so we need to, we need to move the, the equation or, the, the, or the, the conversation from how do you do good on Facebook to how do you do great on Facebook. Um, and that's where uh, some tools and tactics come into play. So the main thing about Facebook, not only is it its size, but as I mentioned, the, the, the targeting and, and the, the granularity to which you can get to. Um, in the, the grand scheme of optimizations, the more you can rarify, the more you can kind of categorize what you're doing, the more optimization opportunities you have. An example is you're targeting people between 20 and 30. If you set up a campaign to target people 20 to 30, that's, that's one campaign. You can then split it up into two and say from 20 to 25 and 26 to 30. That's two campaigns. Which one does better? You can take the money from the poor performing one, put it into the stronger performing one. If you go even further and say every year, let's, let's have a campaign for every age group. So that's 21, 22, 23, that's 10 campaigns. You can do that even on a, on a, on a finer scale, which gives you more opti uh, optimization opportunities, which means you can spend your money more effectively. So if you look at it, this is, these are the different kind of ways you can break things down on, on Facebook. You have the demographic information, you have the education, or if you just think about your own profile, think of all the information that you've put in there from where you went to school, you know, how old you are, um, to you know, whether you like Nando's or One Direction, whatever. There's, there's quite a lot of information, let alone the, the, the hardware stuff about the device where you are. So you take all that and you can see there, there's a rich combination of optimization opportunities, which is a good thing and a bad thing, right? So in this, take an example of you have two genders, five age groups, uh, 10 interests, over five geographies on two different devices, right? Um, that is, or two different platforms. So right there, that's a thousand discrete different campaigns, uh, which is great because that provides you tons of opportunities to really kind of get down to what's working and what's not working. Um, the problem is you then have to create those. Um, I think that's why you know God invented interns, but it, that would take a lot of interns, right? Um, a thousand campaigns, not only to create, but then also you need to manage your budgets over that. You need to make sure that you know what's performing. What, you, you just, it's impossible to. No, it's nigh impossible to kind of uh, to manage all that. Um, more importantly, you're able to break this out. Uh, and again, like I said, you're able to pivot from what you're currently doing to, to kind of create custom audiences and lookalikes to learn even more about how your app's behaving in the marketplace. So the example here is it's not just targeting, you know, you know fitness. It's breaking fitness down into, what is that, muscle? Okay, muscle, uh, men's fitness and physical fitness. And then from there, you can kind of fractal out. And you can see how this could easily, you know, become a very kind of large and, and, and tough beast to, to manage. Um, so we recently did a uh, Facebook campaign for a card battler app where we took kind of the, the general what they wanted to do. We started with, you know, if you go back to the two genders, five countries, five age groups, we started with, you know, a thousand campaigns like that. But then we started building in the lookalike audiences um, and the, uh, the, sorry, the custom audiences and the lookalikes. Um, and, you know, with this kind of, you can kind of picture it in your head how it kind of fractals out to all these different kind of uh, campaigns and, and targeting uh, opportunities. We were able to improve um, the user acquisition by 60%. Um, and that 60% is, that's, that's one step in the direction of going from good to great. Um, I mean, I would say that's, that's pretty good. Um, but the idea is then you improve on that 60% and, and keep going. So how Facebook stacks up against the other, um, uh, well, against the other networks, um, we did a study which involved over uh, 170 different apps uh, and covered about 10 million downloads, uh, which had something about, um, I forget the number, a big number of actual individual app events, like launches, resumes, purchases, and all that stuff. I believe it was another factor of, of 10. So eight, eight to 10 million downloads, which then was about uh, 100 different app events. This is what I mentioned before when positioning fix you as kind of a big data company because we've been running for four years because we've been you know promoting so many different apps we have all this data at our disposal to do this really kind of interesting analysis so we looked at it and Facebook actually turned out to be more expensive on uh, the cost per click about 10 times more expensive 
right there, you're starting to think that's kind of a hard sell. You know, clients would be like, oh, why is the CBC so high? What, what et cetera. Um, the idea is you look at the end of the funnel, though, and how that backed out. Um, there was over 11% improvement on the conversion rate. And the punchline is basically 28% increase on the cost per purchasing user. So, I mean, that generally is you know, I'm gonna say, uh, again, on the path from good to great. And the way we're able to do this um, is, is, again, applying our, our programmatic tools against all these different, um, all these different campaigns. And, um, yeah, just really kind of using past data to, to improve the, the future bit. Using programmatic tools, though, again, think about your, your room full of interns, um, and trying to convey all this to them would be rather difficult. Um, interns just don't pay attention. Um, so, and the other thing you can do on Facebook is retargeting and re-engagement. Um, this is where basically now mobile is positioning. It's not just about user acquisition, it's about user retention and re-engagement. It's about you know, mobile CMR, it's staying in touch with your, your audiences. Um, so retargeting is um, basically taking your desktop users and pushing them to mobile. Um, nine out of 10, if not 10 out of 10 of our clients, uh, find that their users monetize better on mobile than they do on desktop. So it's kind of a no-brainer that if you can shift them from desktop to mobile, you'll make more money out of the same people. Um, so that's retargeting. Re-engagement is you've been, your app's been running promotions for the last 18 months. You've generated millions of installs. Um, people used, you know, you have users who, who loved your app six months ago, used it every day six months ago, but just have gone silent. They need a bit of a reminder, a bit of a nudge. Um, so with Facebook, you're able to do re-engagement. You're able to you know, take a list of, and say, I haven't seen these people in six months. Um, let's get back in touch with them. Again, very much like any other ad campaign uh, or a mobile app campaign, Rarifying and how you can split that up is 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 key. So you say people I haven't seen for six months, um, but used it ten times a day, um, or people who haven't seen six months and use it once a day, and you're able to then kind of optimize around that. Um, Again, this is uh, another case study that we did. Um, the punchline, pretty much, again, is just great imp uh, improvement of performance. Um, skipping along, because I think time is, uh, time is of the essence, we now have Twitter uh, with their recent announcement of their mobile app unit. Um, and again, we're also very excited about this. Um, Fixu has been working with Twitter, very much like we worked with Facebook well before the launch of their product, um, for over a year on, on the different kind of products that they were developing. Um, for uh, mobile acquisition. Um, in the last three months specifically, we've been using this new product that they've just launched on Monday, doing beta campaigns with our clients. And I have to say the results are extremely positive and uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to really getting this up to full speed. Now, the first thing that uh, a lot of people say is Twitter, you know, the reach, it, it's nothing like Facebook. Facebook has a million, uh, sorry, a billion users. Um, Twitter has about 200 million uh, active users. The big difference is though, uh, Twitter users are much more avid, much more, I actually rabid, users of mobile. So it's probably more of who you want to talk to. Um, where Facebook includes people like my parents, um, you know, Twitter has uh, these, these really hardcore active users that really kind of consume apps at, at a great pace. So that's, um, that's a, a good sign, a good crowd that you want to be a part of. So the new mobile app promotion, it, it's very similar to how Facebook's uh, ad unit works. It shows up in the news feed um, and it's a click directly to the app store. Um, if the app is already installed on the phone, then it opens the app. Um, this, I'm sure, will lead to some more interesting stuff um, like you can do on Facebook with the retargeting and, and re-engagement. Um, targeting is also very similar. Uh, the main difference, uh, I guess, is, is, that, is that it's Twitter specific. Twitter specific. Uh, you can target people by category, by uh, the people they follow, uh, by the searches that they do, um, along with keywords. Um, and then also the TV targeting is quite interesting. Um, users who have uh, likely seen your TV commercials, you can actually target them as well. Um, Tailored audiences is a way uh, of kind of creating your own kind of special kind of group that you want to target. Um, one caveat about that is be careful because the more the more you target, the more restrictive you're being, right? Um, so it's best, we're, we're big fans of casting a wide net and drilling down, but if you want to do something very specific, uh, you're able to do that with tailored audiences on, um, on Twitter. And then the, gener uh, the, the general kind of uh, geography, gender, um, device kind of uh, targeting. So, and I'm sure, again, this is just the beginning. Twitter's gonna come up with a lot more. Um, we're very excited about this, and we've kinda had a long, long uh, queue of clients that are just now waiting to get, uh, get on board Twitter. So the fix you difference, uh, what, what, you know, we mentioned like, your room full of interns and uh, a machine. 
you know, in, in the movies, it's usually, you know, man beats machine at the end and all that stuff. Um, unfortunately, in real life, the machines are going to win. I think we know this. Um, so your room full of interns, um, I guess, would be equivalent to the, the left hand side of this campaign. This is this is a graphic representation of our spend on uh, for a, a Facebook uh, campaign or fa Facebook app. Um, which is developed the different colors of the different campaigns the the breadth of those colors um, is the amount of spend and then you can see the white line which tracks the cpi right so the, the left hand side is manually manipulated facebook campaigns and you can see initially it starts out well there's some uh optimizations that are done so the cpi tanks down then what happens is you kind of you saturate and you start spending money on things that aren't working anymore your your, your cpi then goes up you then have to you also need to cast a wider net to get like new data kind of um reaching out into new corners that you haven't explored yet then you can optimize back down again so that's kind of the story that happened on the left hand side then you have that break in the middle and this is where we turned on our automated our automated tools um and what you can see instantly i mean this is a great picture it's like one of those those pictures where it's like you know like a evening starry whatever and then a sailboat comes out if you keep looking at this you can really see some interesting stuff um as soon as you press the button get the automated tools going and these are uh, campaign creation tools um uh, monitoring budgets and uh, spend, uh, and also KPI uh, fluctuations. You can see the fluctuations actually start increasing quite rapidly. Um, the spend uh, is also very different. Um, what 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 you can see here is basically the that learnings that you get on the manual side, where you you, you kind of optimize and you have to open up your budgets again and CPIs go up, and then you're doing that, but just on a much faster scale. So you're learning. Well, the machine is learning much quicker. Um, so it's it's again, um, this is kind of just a graphical representation presentation of how, how, how powerful the automated truly programmatic buying is uh, especially on networks like uh, Facebook and Twitter so um, again in this case study the the overall result was 20% over a 20% increase in CPI costs so that is um, it's, it's a bit of a rushed um, presentation uh, but for the 15 minutes I hope I was able to touch on a bit about Facebook a bit about uh, Twitter and the tools that Fis uh, Fixu has developed to uh, basically uh, do mobile user acquisition as it truly should be which is programmatically uh, and uh, cost effectively so if you have any questions I'll be around for the rest of the afternoon feel free to uh, to grab me in the coffee room thanks very much cheers